we have a responsibility as the United States to stop the flow of firearms, whether it's going to our northern border, crossing into Canada, or our southern border going into Mexico. It's no secret that thousands of Texas guns end up across the border in Mexico, but did you know that more Texas guns are also being recovered in Canada as well? The News 4 I team's Jordan Elder has uncovered new numbers showing the scope of this issue, and she's finding out what's being done to stop it. Every firearm has a story, and it's the ATF's job to uncover what that story is. As they investigate guns used in international crimes, a lot of times they're finding that that story starts right here in Texas. April 11, 2023, more than 170 firearms were seized by the Toronto Police Service in a joint operation they called Project Moneypenny. A seizure of this size is definitely going to save lives on the streets of the GTA and elsewhere. Several of these guns came from right here in Texas. We know that because experts like ATF Special Agent in Charge Michael Waddell are working with Canada and other countries to track them. They use technology called E-Trace. Through the E-Trace program, it will tell us where that firearm was originally sold at that level, and that's where our investigation began. For years, we've brought you stories about how Texas guns are making their way to Mexico, but we obtained data that shows more Texas firearms are moving north, too. In Ontario, the number of seized guns from Texas jumped about 70% in 2022. What does that say about the overall issue of firearms moving across borders? What we're looking at is actually a broader number of firearms because more E-Trace is being utilized as part of this investigation, and so we're seeing more recoveries through those traces. So more tracing equals more answers, driving up those numbers. But why is this happening? Waddell says Canada recently changed their gun laws. And what that has done, it's helped create a black market. He says firearms are readily available in Texas, and people often get blinded by the dollar signs that come with smuggling opportunities, despite the risk they bring. It's something Congressman Joaquin Castro says needs to stop at both borders. Much of our focus has been south when it comes to issues of the border. We haven't focused as much, nearly as much, on our northern border are on Canada versus Mexico. Since the numbers are still much greater in Mexico, he and other lawmakers introduced the Disarming Cartels Act late last year, calling for more interagency collaboration to prevent guns from crossing the southern border. As for Canada, Waddell says collaboration is key there too. That's where we partner up with our Canadian partners uh, to help identify and dismantle those trafficking organizations. The seizures may not be the volume of guns we saw in Project Moneypenny, but each firearm they trace can tell the story of its owner, who can then be brought to justice. In that project's case, it was 42 people arrested. For the News 4i team, I'm Jordan Elder. A new law passed in 2022 brought stronger prison penalties for straw purchasing. That's where you buy a gun for someone who either can't do it themselves because of a criminal record or they don't want their name attached to it. The ATF says that law opened new doors for them and the prosecutions could make communities safer.